gentlemen, put your hands together for Miss Wanda Saint. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. It's nice. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much, man. It was very cool. <laughs> thank you. Good to be here in Seattle. Good to be here. Man. This is nice, see, because I, I never know what to expect, you know, because, you know, people say anything to me. You know. I am Wanda. One did one show this lady yelled out, Wanda, I love you. I was like, thank you, love you too. Then she goes, I named my dog after you. <laughs> That's not cool. I don't want to hear Wanda shit on the rug again today. Wanda, stop sniffing that dog's ass. <laughs> Wanda pregnant, we gotta get that bitch fixed. <laughs> I, mean, I, I like that, you know, people, you know, they enjoy me and they feel like they can come and talk to me, but sometimes, don't. plane and this flight attendant walks up and she goes, uh, Miss Sykes, this is Bobby. Bobby's flying by himself today and we're going to sit him next to you. <laughs> Why? Uh, obviously, Bobby's parents don't give a fuck about him, so... <laughs> what do you expect from me? Do I look like the Ann Nanny? You know, I don't want to be bothered, man. I want to sit here and read my book, you know, but Bobby wanted to talk the whole fucking flight. I put my iPod on, you know, figure Bobby get the hint. Bobby kept talking, kept talking, tapped me on my shoulder. I was like, see, this is why you're flying by yourself. Maybe you shut the fuck up every now and then. Somebody will accompany your little ass. Ain't nobody waiting for you on the other end. <laughs> and then I started thinking, because my favorite show is Lost. And I was like, and I was like, what if this plane goes down and it's just me and Bobby? I'm gonna eat them. I am. I eat them up. First bite will be the vocal cords. I'm telling you, I tear them up. Rescue people will show up like, man, what, what are you doing? Hey, hey, you allowed to eat people when you survive a plane crash. I, I didn't know how long I was gonna be stranded out here. <laughs> stranded? Ma'am, you, you, your flight went down three minutes ago. <laughs> You were flying from Chicago to Nashville. <laughs> you can see the fucking IHOP from here. What is your problem? <laughs> mm. He's talking. <laughs> My other favorite show, American Idol. I was, I was trying to hold out. I was trying to hold out, you know, because, you know, because Fox canceled me too. So I was like, fuck Fox, I ain't watching American Idol. <laughs> oh, I hold a grudge. I hold a grudge. I do. But I, but I like that show and I love it because it's mean. <laughs> it is. They make the loser sing. Come on. That's beautiful. I like that. <laughs> and I was like, well, America has voted and you're going home. <laughs> but first, let's watch this video package of a happier time before we crushed all your hopes and dreams. <laughs> <laughs> you see? 
see them all smiling with their little yellow piece of tape. I'm going to Hollywood, you know. It's like, you had a bad day, you take your water. <laughs> I was like, well, looks like the end of the road for you, but before you get out of here, sing for us one more time. Go ahead, remind America why they didn't vote for you. Come on. Hey. Hey. That couldn't be me. Well, I'm one of those people, you, you couldn't tell me I'm going home. That would be the last place I'd go. I'm like, fuck you, I ain't going home. I'm grown, I go home when I want to go home. I, I'd be the last one in the parking lot. Hey, uh-uh, why don't you go home? Fuck you. <laughs> I'd be out in front of Ryan Seacrest's house. Yeah, yeah, you go home, motherfucker. <laughs> Seacrest out. So, I, so I, I don't, I don't have, have, have kids, but I have a dog. I have a dog, his name is Riley, man. And I, and I love, I love dogs, and I hate when women compare men to dogs. We gotta stop doing that, ladies. You know, men are dogs, men are dogs. We gotta, gotta stop that. Men are not dogs, uh-uh. Dogs are loyal. You know, you... <laughs> I mean, Come on, guys, I've never found any strange panties in my dog's house. <laughs> dogs are great. They never leave you, they, they're there for you, and they can lick their own balls. <laughs> <laughs> I love animals. Animals are great, man. <laughs> I don't understand how people could be mean to animals. Like, did, did you hear this story about this guy? He, he caught a mouse in his home, but instead of just letting the mouse outside, he threw it in a pile of burning leaves. Yeah, yeah, but here comes some karma for your ass. The mouse runs out of the pile of burning leaves on fire back into his house. <laughs> This shit down to the ground. Oh, that was beautiful. And not only is he an asshole, he's a stupid asshole because he's on the news talking about it. There's no way in the world you would have gotten that story out of me. I would have made up anything. I don't care. I'd be like, Wanda, what, what happened? Uh, I was freebasing. Freebasing? Why do the people do freebasing anymore? And this is why. <laughs> I, res I respect animals too, you know. You know, like, like when I was in Hawaii, they, uh, they wanted me to go swimming with the dolphins. It's like, go swimming with the dog. You tried to, yeah, go swim with the dolphins. I was like, mm, no, thank you. And the, and the guy was like, oh, it's safe. It's no, you know, only thing is that, you know, sometimes the dolphins, when you're out there with them, they get excited and they might go to the bathroom on you. <laughs> like, number one or number two? <laughs> and he says, number two? I was like, oh, I don't want no dolphin shit on me. I, I don't even know what that looks like. I, and I'm sure you just can't shout that out. <laughs> mm -mm. And then when I thought about it, I was like, okay, because you know, we're, we're out there in the water messing with the dolphins, you know, swimming with them and touching them and making them do tricks. So it made sense to me, because think about it. If you were in your living room on your sofa taking a nap, and you woke up and there was a real live dolphin rubbing your belly. <laughs> Wouldn't you shit? <laughs> I would shit. That would scare the shit out of me. You real like a little dolphin. What the hell are you doing in my living room? 
did the dolphin try to make you do tricks? Come on, jump through the hoop. <laughs> so I did it. I went swimming with the dolphins. And it's exactly what I expected, you know. We get out there and they put you in little small groups, you know, I was in there with three other girls and, you know, you, you get to play with them and do little, little tricks and stuff and then they have a photo op and they take your picture. And, you know, and they taught the dolphin, you know, different poses, like they'll, they'll hug you or, or, you know, the dolphin will kiss you or the dolphin lets you kiss them. And, uh, you know, I, I had a racist dolphin. I did, he's a racist ass dog. Cause I was in the group with three other white girls and, and you, you should see their pictures. They, you know, they were cute. You should see my fucked up picture. <laughs> Dolphin hugging me like this. <laughs> I was like, fuck you, Dolphin, you bottle nose bastard. What is this shit? Kobe ass get caught in a tuna net. Fuck you. <laughs> Racist ass dolphin. <laughs> and then the girl had the nerve to ask me, so would you like this in a keychain? Why? Why would this fucked up picture on a keychain? And I know you taught him this shit. Why don't you just put a little hood on him next time? Why don't you do that? <laughs> I should have known better. I should have, you know. Because whenever, whenever people rave about something, that's when my red flag goes up, you know. <laughs> See, like, like, my, like my business manager, like, come on, Juan, you gotta get back into the stock market. Put your money to work. I was like, mm-mm, I work. That's enough. <laughs> my money stays at home. I got stay at home money. <laughs> I want my money barefoot and pregnant. <laughs> broke, man. You know, then the government try to, try to, you know, push it off on us. We're gonna privatize Social Security because the American public, they know what to do with their money more so than the government does. Like, obviously you know nothing about the American public. In 2004, we spent $48 billion in lottery tickets. You can't trust us with our money? People are like, well, how are you planning for your retirement? Oh, uh, Powerball. Sometimes I diversify and do scratch-offs, but it's mainly Powerball. <laughs> we don't know what to do with the money. The government doesn't know what to do. You know, spend the waste of money, just throwing away, like, like the space program. You know, okay, fine, we could have a space program, but why billions and billions of dollars in the space program? What have we learned from our space travels? I mean, really, what has NASA given us other than a fucking mattress that you can jump up and down on and not spill your wine? What the fuck? Can you give me more than a mattress? <laughs> to me, the space program is nothing but a big ass welfare program for really smart people. <laughs> it's like these people are so smart, they're useless. It's like, we just gotta give them busy work. Just keep them busy. Here, 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 just, just look up. Here, just fucking look up. Just <laughs> what, really? What, I mean, a bunch of useless information. It's like, uh, did you know that there was once water on Mars? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, are you talking to me? Cause I don't give a fuck. I'm sorry. I thought. Don't you... Did you know that there was once vodka in this glass? <laughs> don't you write up a little paper on that? Well, you don't understand the significance of that. That means that there was life on Mars. Hmm, really? It probably was life on Mars, and then they probably starved to death because they spent their money on a space program. <laughs> oh, 
oh, we're going to spend billions of dollars build a permanent station on the moon. That's what the president proposed. We're going to the moon. Why? Why? Over 75% of Americans don't even have passports. <laughs> How the fuck are we going to go to the moon when we can't even get out the country? <laughs> we ain't going to the moon. all these different agencies and stuff, you know, Bush from, you know, Department of Homeland Security, the, you know, Department of what, National Intelligence, you know. What they really need to do is, the, is form a Department of Personal Shoppers. That's what we need. We need like some, some working single mothers. Let them handle the budget. You know, some people who know how to pinch a penny. You know? That's what we need. You know, I can see the, uh, Two billion dollars on a bomb. You could have got these bombs at Target. Shirley. <laughs> Shirley, ain't bombs on sale? Bombs on sale. Oh, make no sense. Put that money back in my education budget, too. Every penny of it. How about that? That's what we need, some personal shoppers. They'll make better deals than the president. That man makes the worst deals. Oh my God. When the president went to India, do you know what they got? Nuclear technology. Do you know what we got? Mangoes. What the fuck? don't even sound right, so I know it didn't look good on paper. He's like, hmm, they get nuclear technology, and we get mangoes. <laughs> I like mangoes. <laughs> Just something about the way the juice drips down my chin. I Here's the kicker. Okay, so during our whole, you know, the whole war on terror, you know who's been helping us out? Pakistan. Who hates Pakistan? India. What do we give India? Nuclear technology. <laughs> now, when eventually India gets around to blowing up Pakistan, what are we going to tell our dear friends Pakistan? Here, throw these mangoes at them. Just get rid of all nuclear weapons. Just, you know, just use it for positive shit. Just, can they really do the non-proliferation they signed? Can we just start getting rid, get rid of the weapons and just hand out some bats? That's what I think. Let's go back to clubs. Let's go back to good old-fashioned caveman clubbings, you know? That's what I want. Wouldn't you want to turn on CNN and see a good suicide clubbing going on? You know, just some crazy asshole running through a restaurant. In the name of Allah, Jihad. <laughs> and I want the leaders to be out front leading the troops with the club. That's how I want it. That's what I want. Let's go real old school. Wouldn't you love to see Bush out there with a club and a helmet leading the troops, you know? But of course, you know his helmet will have those two beer can holders in the straw. <laughs> Y'all ready to do some clubbing? <laughs> Uh-oh, I think I'm empty on this side. <laughs> no, Mr. President, I think you empty on this side, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm just sick of this. This is the most arrogant administration I've ever seen. I mean, it's, I am so sick. 
sick of this. No, screw the system of checks and balances. We gonna do whatever the fuck we wanna do. Yeah. It's just arrogance, man. You know what, what tickles me? Like what, you watch the news and you see like uh, some, you know, somebody from the administration like Cheney or whatever, they go over to Iraq and say, you know, we're gonna do a surprise visit to the troops to boost the morale, you know, surprise visit. How arrogant, how high do you think of yourself? I mean, because think about it. Since when has a surprise visit from your boss made your day? is the last motherfucker you want to see. You don't want to get to work all late and you run in your office and your boss spins around in your chair. Ta-da! Man, your best days at work is when you get there and you find out that the boss is sick and ain't coming in. Oh, man! Now, that's a great day right there. Oh, you have a good time that day. Then you, then, then, then you even start fantasizing, like, maybe it'd be something serious. <laughs> and he'll never come in. There'll be no more boss. You dream of that shit. You know, but, but you know, Cheney and them, they don't care. They just show up, you know. I mean, like, they're gonna really boost the troops' morale. I mean, come on, even Bob Hope had sense enough to know to take, you know, a stripper or, or a charro with him, you know? Cheney just shows up with Rumsfeld. <laughs> Don't nobody want to see Rumsfeld doing the hoochie-coochie dance? If Cheney really wants to boost morale, you know, why don't he, while he's over there, why don't he pick up a gun and join in the fight? Why don't he do that? But, but then again, <laughs> not a good idea. Our troops have a hard enough time already. They really don't need the vice president taking pot shots at them either, you know. <laughs> what the fuck? What? That's coming from our side. What the hell is that? Yeah. And I couldn't bear to watch a press conference of one of our soldiers on national television talking about, um, I just would like to apologize to the vice president for all the stress and trouble that he's been through for uh, shooting me in the head. <laughs> it was totally my fault. I shouldn't have had my head near his weapon. <laughs> <laughs> and what kind of medal do you get when you get shot by the vice president? What the? You know, you don't get a purple heart, you get one of Dick Cheney's old bad hearts, you know. <laughs> here you go, soldier, this is lucky number four right here. Here you go. And you know, and it just so pissed me off when I, when I heard about him shooting his friend. I'm like, what the fuck is he doing with leisure time anyway? What is he doing taking a day off? You know, well, I mean, really, he's out there on some secluded ranch, hunting with his rich friends. What the fuck is, he should be spending every minute of his waking life trying to figure out how to clean up that shit in Iraq and get our men and women back here. <laughs> Let them come home so they can hang out with their families, you know, go drinking and shoot their friends in the face. Sick of it, man. I mean, just the, the whole thing in Iraq, it's just, it's just so fucked. It's so fucked. It really is. Because you know what? It's a waste. It's such a waste of everything, man. Because you know, we, we don't understand them. These people kill over cartoons. It's a whole different ball game, man. We don't understand it, you know? And okay, let's say they do establish a government. All right, big deal. They establish a government. Eventually, they're gonna elect an asshole. And he's gonna fuck up every accomplishment that we have made over there. I mean, it's gonna happen. We did it. I'm sick of 
sick of politicians across the board. I really am. Republicans, Democrats, I'm, they're all shady. I'm sick of them. You know, to me, political office should be like jury duty. <laughs> really, you should just get a notice in the mail one day and be like, oh shit, I'm Secretary of State next month. <laughs> Ain't this a bitch? I gotta get a doctor's note. I'm getting out this shit. I ain't doing this shit. <laughs> it's like politicians, they don't even understand how they, you know, the policies they make, the impact it has on our lives, man. You know, when they was messing around with the Medicare program, the prescription program, they drove those old people crazy. You know, like, you put the pressure on them too. You gotta hurry and pick your program. But we need more time. It's confusing. We don't understand the forms. We don't know. Ah, come on. Nah, nah, nah. nope. Nah. We sticking with the deadline. You can go online and do it. <laughs> you don't want a bunch of old people surfing the web. You know how many viruses are out there? They'll shut down the whole damn internet. Whenever my parents send me an email, the first three are always blank. <laughs> Look, you've got mail. No, I don't. Oh, wait around a little bit longer. You've got mail. Oh, there they are. Mm, no, not yet. I wait around so long, I just end up calling them. Look. Hey, Ma, how you doing? Girl, I was just emailing you. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> just figure I'd give you a call, see if everything was okay, you know. Mm, everything's fine. Your, your cousin had a baby, and I was gonna send you a picture. Oh, you, uh, you were gonna do an attachment? <laughs> bless your heart, bless your heart. I tell you what, Ma, just ship me the baby and I, I'll take his picture and ship it back to you. That, I think that'll be faster. I'll just do it that way. surfing the web. Man, you know what all kind of nasty shit is on the internet? You don't want some old person up there, you know, trying to find a Medicare site and they end up in some nasty porn site and then they looking at some big titty blonde woman doing something disgusting with a donkey and a midget and one of their neighbors and it scares the shit out of them. They pass out and have a stroke, but they can't get no medical attention because they ain't filled out their forms yet. You know, and I have older aunts and uncles, so, you know, I keep an eye on them, because I, you know, I want to make sure they get their medications, you know? I don't want to go home and see my aunt out there tricking for her scripts. <laughs> Hand job for a Lipitor. Suck your dick for Boniva. <laughs> they don't understand the policies, man, how it affects us, you know? Now they, they're after us, ladies, right? The whole abortion thing. You know, it's after the last two Supreme Court appointments, I'm, I'm nervous, man. I'm scared, ladies. If you want to, you know, protect your rights, you got to get out there. You got to be heard, you know? I'm, I, I'm real nervous. Yeah. I got two abortions on the way here. I was like, I better stock up. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm pro-choice, but the thing is when you say you're pro-choice, it's almost like pro-lifers hear something totally different. 
they, it's like they hear like you're, you're pro-abortion, which is ridiculous because that's, you know, abortion, that's the worst decision a woman has ever faced with. Nobody's out, you know, wanting to have an abortion. Nobody's pro-abortion. It's not like women are out having abortion parties or anything, you know? Your girlfriend don't call you. Girl, let's do something crazy. <laughs> you thinking what I'm thinking? Nobody wants an abortion. Nobody's proud of it either. That's why women lie about having an abortion. Lie to anybody. You go to a new dentist and you got to fill out that medical history for. They're like, any liver problems? Nope. <laughs> Respiratory symptoms? Nope. Have you ever had an abortion? <laughs> what the fuck does that have to do with my teeth cleaning? <laughs> no. Your work is upstairs. You have no business in my basement. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. A woman will lie to her gynecologist about having an abortion. Like, have you ever had an abortion? Ooh. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, uh, mm -mm, no. Oh, because during the exam, I noticed some, oh, well, you did, oh, really? Uh. That was a, uh, oh, that was a, uh, uh, from an uh, old snowboarding accident. <laughs> yeah, I fell on my uterus all the way, just a nasty spill. I, ooh, boy, yeah, they, uh, they, um, they said I, I pulled my uterus or something. Does that sound right? I pulled you, no? That don't sound right? Uh, a contusion of the uteri, maybe? <laughs> no? So, that's not right? Okay. Well, how, how are my titties? Because that's really my main concern. How, my titties are okay, right? Okay. <laughs> you know, if titties are identical, they're fake. <laughs> that's the main way you can tell, man. They are, you know, because women tell you the right titty is always the best titty. <laughs> I don't know what it is, and you know, I don't know if it's because maybe, maybe with me, maybe it's because I'm right handed, so that right titty gets a workout, you know? <laughs> that, that right titty stays busy. It's... Busy, busy, busy. And you know what I notice? Whenever I get undressed, I always pull the left one out first. Because that's like the appetizer, you know? It's like... <laughs> you know, that sets the tone. It's like, mm, oh, you like that. Really? You like that, baby? You do? Mm -hmm. Well, wait till you see. Bam! They're all the same, because they, you know, they're fake, you know. And I, I watch a lot of porn when I'm in a hotel. Oh, I don't, something about being in a hotel room is just perfect, because it's like in your own little dirty world, you know, just, I abuse myself in a hotel room. Oh my, just say anything to myself. You like that shit, don't you, bitch? Come on, fucking like that shit. Yes, I do, I do. porn at home. I do. And if I do, it's always in my bedroom. You know, I never watch porn in the living room. I don't know, something about watching porn in the living room is just, just so low class. I just, you know, because that's a common area. You entertain in that space. I can't sit there and watch Oprah with my friends if I know what I just did sitting in the sofa. I'm like, 
scooch down. Just <laughs> trust me. Just scoot. <laughs> messing with everybody, man. Right? Gay marriage, messing with gay marriage, you know. Like at me, I'm 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 for I'm for gay marriage. But I don't but I don't like that I have to say that, because to me, it's like, it, it shouldn't even be debated. It shouldn't even be in the court systems. <laughs> Government shouldn't be involved in this. Because it's very simple. If you don't believe in same-sex marriage, then don't marry somebody of the same sex. <laughs> Over shit that don't affect them. <laughs> really, you know, like I'm only gonna protest and march and get involved if shit affects me. You know, if they said, "Hey, we're gonna ban the sale of alcohol after 9 p.m." <laughs> Be, be a lot of marching going on, be more leaning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not a very effective protest. But <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't understand how does someone else's marriage affect your marriage? It's ridiculous. You don't like it. Uh, really? If your marriage is fucked up, it's because you fucked it up. <laughs> what, what, what are, are straight couples in marriage counseling now? Like, you know, we just ain't been working together since uh, Bill and Ted hooked up. <laughs> just, we just can't get along, you know. Like, and I, I didn't know we gotta protect marriage. That's what they say, we gotta protect marriage. You know, I don't think same-sex couples, I don't think that's the biggest threat to marriage. I think the biggest threat to marriage is divorce. I mean, that's what fucked up my marriage. <laughs> so if they're so concerned about preserving marriage and it's so sanctum, you know, the sanctity of marriage, if they want to protect marriage, what they should do is ban divorce, right? Make marriage like the mafia. Once you're in, you're in. I mean, the, the murder rate will go up, but you know, hey. <laughs> Have a lot of couples sleeping with one eye open. I know that. <laughs> and don't try to get up in the middle of the night either, you know. Hey, 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 where you going? <laughs> I'm thirsty. <laughs> well, me too. I'm about to get me one of those NASA mattress so I can sneak out of the bed. <laughs> you don't hear me. <laughs> Wait, what, what is the fear? What are people afraid of? Well, you scared gay marriage would be better than your marriage or something? Like, Look at them happy ass gays. They <laughs> 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 scared your wife would nag you and stuff. Like, honey, honey. Look at Bill and Ted. Oh my God, I love those guys. I, they sat on that porch for hours and talk, and I, I run into them all the time at the, at the mall, and I see them shopping. I mean, they spend a lot of quality time together. I, I wish we could do that. I, I wish we could be a little bit more like Bill and Ted. Really? Well, maybe if you let me fuck you in your ass a couple times. That could be me and you right there, baby. That, we could have that. I think white people commit more crimes than black people. I know what y'all think is in Wanda, you know, on the news. Yeah, I know. You see a lot of black people getting arrested. But people behind bars, that does not represent who commits crimes. 
people behind bars represents who got caught. <laughs> we always get caught. Cause they just waiting for us to fuck up, you know. Racial profiling. It's alive and well and we all do it. We all, even black people do it. That's how ingrained it is. Black people, we see a black man running down the street, we're like, what the hell did he just do? <laughs> it just makes us all look bad. <laughs> run, brother, run, run. <laughs> we see a white man running down the street, we're like, oh, he must be late. <laughs> He could be wearing a ski mask, have a big bag of money, <laughs> and a gun. We still like, oh, I guess he tried to make it to the bank before it closes. <laughs> Ooh, that's a big deposit. Look at that. <laughs> Racial profile. I'm trying to stop it, so uh, you know, I'm trying to treat everybody the same. Just treat everybody like criminals. That's what I'm doing. That's what you guys start doing. It's my favorite thing. When I'm in the, uh, at a red light, I wait for like a nice car to pull up beside me with like a well-dressed white guy behind the wheel and I just stare at him. <laughs> and as soon as he looks at me, I lock my door. <laughs> <laughs> and how you like it, huh? I treat everybody like criminals, man. Because people don't get treated the same. They don't. I mean, that's just, that's just life, you know? We treat people differently, you know? Like, okay, like, you know, in the news, like, whenever you see, like, a missing, missing girl or something, you know, like, the, like the girl going go, go down on to the islands or something, she's missing, it's all over the news, you know? She comes from a good family, so it's all over the news, you know? You know, you never see the story about the missing hooker. <laughs> you never see, hear Wolf Blitzer go, where's Diamond? missing, they don't go, they don't look for them. You could actually kill a stripper, I mean, kill, kill a hooker and get away with it. You could. They, people don't investigate the death of a hooker. They don't. The only time they do is like when the killer goes crazy and kills like eight more hookers. <laughs> and then finally somebody goes, hey, what happened to all our hoes? I'm missing some hoes. <laughs> yes, I would like to file a missing hoe report. <laughs> I was like, you know, it's, 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 it's crazy, because at the end of the day, I mean, it's the oldest profession. Women can earn a living selling their bodies. And the problem with that is that, you know, it's, it affects all of us. You know, because women, you know, we, 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 we got this, this pressure on us. Because, I mean, you know, you just think like, damn, re regardless of your achievements and all that stuff, eventually you're just objectified. You know, it's like, it's all about the physical, how we look and all that. And that shit, you know, you, it just makes you mad. And, and that's why we snap and, and kill you in your sleep. Please, women think about it. We think about it every day, killing y'all. We really do. Sometimes two, three times a day, we think about killing y'all. You know, we just, just think about it. We don't actually, you know, do it. Just think about it. Because every day a man says or does something just makes you go, I wish I could just snatch his eyeballs right out of his head and shove them up his butt so he could see how big of an asshole he really is. It, man, just snap, you know, just crazy, just little stuff just gets to us, you know, just think of creative ways of killing y'all too, just, I should just take his knees and knock them out so they go that way. Maybe he'll bend over and pick up something around his house every now and then. <laughs> we 
we're crazy. We nuts, man. And that's why God didn't give us muscles. <laughs> he knew better. That's why he didn't, mm -mm, he knew we couldn't handle muscles. Guys, do you know if we were physically stronger than y'all, we would whoop your ass every day. I mean, just unprovoked ass whippings, just. <laughs> nasty, man. <laughs> so, we, so we do so much, man, you know, and, we, and we're judged so harshly, just looks and everything, and then, you know, like that's, we in, end up snapping. That's why that lady, you know, she snapped and ran over her husband with her biz over and over and over and over <laughs> and over again. You know, she couldn't take it. She went out, had plastic surgery, did all this stuff for him, and then he's cheating. She couldn't deal with it. She's like, this mother, you gonna cheat on me? Huh, how about this? Huh? Come on. Oh, you wanna cheat, huh? Try running around with these broke up legs. Here. Oh, see how cute you look with these tire tracks around your face. Huh? Oh, honey, rub my back. Here you go. How's that for your back rub? And then she realized her daughter was in the car with her. <laughs> Mom and daddy just having a little spat, baby. <laughs> It'll be okay. <laughs> but, but she didn't. She 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 was very remorseful. She was. I I, I watched the trial and she she didn't mean to do it. You know she. she she was, but you know, I, I, even to this day, I like to picture her in her cell, you know, and it's lights out, and she's all sad about to fall asleep, and then every now and then she just thinks, bloop, bloop. Like, But it's, it's just so much pressure on us, guys. You don't understand. It's just, you know, and even as little girls we're taught, you know, we have something that everybody wants. You gotta protect it. You gotta be careful. You gotta cherish it. And that's a lot of fucking pressure. And I would like a break. <laughs> you know what make my life so much easier? Ladies, wouldn't you love this? Wouldn't it be wonderful if our pussies were detachable? marinate a little bit. Just think about that. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if you could just leave your pussy at home sometimes? <laughs> just think of the freedom that you will have. You get home from work, it's getting a little dark outside. You're like, oh, I would like to go for a jog, but it's getting too dark. Oh, I just leave it at home. And you, <laughs> and you out jogging. Yeah, it could be pitch black. You still out there just jogging, enjoying yourself, you know? If some crazy guy jumps out the bush like, ah, you're like, oh, I left it at home. <laughs> Sorry, I, I have absolutely nothing of value on me. I'm pussyless. There's so much freedom. You can do anything. You know, you, you can go visit a professional ball player's hotel room at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Sex, oh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Look, my pussy's not even in the building. <laughs> I'm just here to talk about your jump shot. Now look, you gotta bend your knees when you're at the free throw line. <laughs> That'd be great. You, then you can find out who your real girlfriends are. You know, have some real sisterhood, some real bonding. You know, call your girl late at night. Hey, I'm so, I, I'm so, I'm sorry to wake you. Uh, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm still out on my date. Mm -hmm. Girl, we are having a good time. I didn't know it was going to be this much fun. 
look, do me a favor. Run by my house and grab my pussy. It's in the shoebox on the top shelf. <laughs> and guys, you would have some perks too. You know, baby, I'm going out with the girls. I'll be back. Hey, hey, ho, uh, you uh, going out with your girlfriends. Uh, Guess you can uh, leave your pussy at home. <laughs> I'll watch it. <laughs> but ladies, you know you can't trust them. <laughs> you get home. Pussy all bent out of shape. <laughs> what is this? Jackass, the, can't trust you with shit. Now I'm gonna have to put it in the dryer and reshape it. I better put a bounce in there. <laughs> Guy standing there, uh. Some of the fellas came by. <laughs> oh, man. So anyway. Well, well I'm a, I love, I love like getting older, man. You know, I am. I'm getting older. I mean, it's like, it's why I'm doing my life easier. And, I, and it's because I'm getting older, you know? And I love getting older because I know like the older I get, the less I care. <laughs> oh, the words, I don't give a fuck, just fly out of my mouth. It's, it's almost like I had Tourette's or something. I just, I can't control it. I don't give a fuck. Oh, I don't give a fuck. You think I give a fuck? I don't give a fuck. And when I ain't saying it, I'm thinking it. <laughs> I, th I mean, about petty stuff, too. Anything. I could be in the grocery store, paper or plastic. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but you have to be careful who you say that to, because this cashier, she was like 63, and she didn't give a fuck either. <laughs> I walked out of there with my shit in my arms, like, ain't this a bitch? She... she <laughs> She didn't give a fuck. Man. <laughs> hey, man, can, can you help me out? You kick my bread over here. Oh, yeah. I'm parked right up here. Come on, help me out, man. But I take it too far, though, I do. Because now I take the attitude too far, because now I'm, I'll be honest with you. I am the worst in bed. I am. Oh, I'm awful. Because I don't give a fuck. I don't. I'm t I am awful, you know, for real, because this, this, this is how I feel. I have sex to have an orgasm, and I know how to have an orgasm in a reasonable amount of time. <laughs> so I'm like, you just need to shut the fuck up and do what I say, and we can wrap this baby up in a matter of minutes. 
Oh. I don't have all night to be fucking around with your ass. I got shit to do. It's almost like I have ADD in bed now. I'm at the 10 or 12 minutes, you lose me. I start looking around at the ceiling. Mm. I should paint in here. <laughs> Just an accent wall. Just that, that'd be real cute. Really brighten this room. Oh, I'm sorry, are we still fucking? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't try stuff. Hey, let's do this position. Why? That position don't make me come. You think I'm gonna pull a hamstring just for some frivolous fucking? Fuck you. Uh-uh. I don't give a fuck. I ain't doing that shit. And if it's not good, I let you know. I will boo. Boo. <laughs> boo. Excuse me, boo, you, boo, boo. <laughs> boo. I don't give a fuck. And I don't like food with my sex either. I don't, I don't know, I'm gonna put some whipped cream here and chocolate sauce there and strawberry. I don't know, I don't want all that sticky shit on me. And see, and that's your problem, you fat fuck. Maybe if you just eat and not eat and fuck, you lose a few pounds. I need me a diabetic, that's what I need. And I don't linger around long either. When I'm done, I'm done. Oh, uh-uh, so you better be close behind me. I'm like, oh, I'm done. Oh, I'm close, really? Yeah, real close, yeah, I'm real close. Well, good, because I'm gonna drop your ass off here and you can walk the rest of the way. Thank you so much, Sian. I appreciate it. Thank y'all.